Ordinarily, um, I would work through this paper, which is on page 342 of your textbook, uh, during a lesson. So I'm going to work through it, talk my way through it. So I'm thinking that perhaps you could uh, sit and try and do this with me. So um, perhaps try question one and then listen to me answering question one. So hopefully you'll be able to read what I'm writing. And as always, if there's any questions, uh, please let me know. So let me get some paper sorted uh, and then I'm going to make a start. So I'm, I'm on page 342 uh, of um, our normal uh, maths book. Okay, so 342, um, I'm going to work through, I'm going to talk my way through, I'm going to talk about how I would approach the questions. I'm not going to have space to have the book and the paper in view, um, but I'll assume that you have the, uh, you have the questions. So. Um, let's make a start. So this is question one. So as I said, I would, if I were you now, pause me um, and try and have a go at question one and then we'll see if we get the same answer. Um, I will also uh, try and check that we all get the same answers as the back of the book. Because um, I don't have you watching me to make sure that I don't make a silly mistake. Um, so let's see how this goes. Um, right. Given that 4 equals 64 to the power n, find the value of n. Right, um, so I would be thinking that 4 cubed equals 64. So hence, 4 equals the cube root of 64. And now you're beginning to see the link. So we need to write a cube root as a power, which we know is a power of a third. So I would write that n uh, equals a third. And that is the first, uh, that's the first question. Um, a nice start to the paper, only one mark, but it didn't even take us a minute, so that's fine. Uh, right, square root of 50 in the form k root 2. We'll probably find that if we just start fiddling around with this third, it will naturally get to k root 2. So that's what I'm aiming for. I'm not going to worry too much. Hopefully, if I do this, it'll just turn out like this anyway. So, uh, square root of 50. I'm going to write 50 as two numbers times together, such that one of them is a square number. Um, right, so that's the same as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, which is 5 root 2. Uh, so then I'd probably be explicit uh, and tell them that k equals 5. Um, right, next question. Find the equation of the line which is parallel to 2x minus 3y plus 4 equals 0 that passes through that point. Then it tells me how it wants me to give my answer, so I'll just have to make sure at the end that I give my answer uh, in the correct way. Um, right, so again, I would pause it now, have a go at question 2, and then come back to me in a second. Um, right, so I've got 2x minus 3y plus 4 equals zero. Um, I can't do anything until I've got it in the form y equals mx plus c. That should have been your first port of call. You need to have it in the form y equals mx plus c. So um, I'm going to put the minus 3y on the other side and then I'm going to divide by 3. I feel under pressure without you lot watching me to check I'm not making a silly mistake. Um, right, now I've got it in that form. I know that the gradient of this line is two thirds, and I want a line parallel. Now, parallel has the same gradient. And if I were you, I would be writing all of these things down. Just, you're trying to give a narrative that shows the examiner that you know what you're doing. So, uh, parallel, same gradient. So our line, we know, is going to look like, our line is going to look like that. Now, it tells us that our new line passes through the point 5, 6. If we put 5, 6 into here, that's going to tell us how to work out C. So, uh, I know that Y is 6. Oh, and they've given us 2 thirds times 5, which isn't a nice number. So 6 equals 10 over 3 plus C. So C equals 8 over 3, maybe. Uh, 20, 20, yeah, 8 over 3. 
Right, so then our line is um, y equals 2 thirds x plus 8 over 3. Now, you're probably itching now to multiply through by 3, but if you check the question, it says give your answer in the form y equals. So leave it like that. That's us done now with that question. Right, let's have a look at question 3 then. So this is a, a student has done the work. Um, and we're going to have a look at it. So a student has attempted this question um, and we are going to have a look at it. Um, so we need to find uh, two errors made by the student. So if you look through, um, I agree with the first line in terms of trying to write it in a nicer way, but you'll notice that they have written that 3 over root x is the same as 3x to the half. We know, however, that 3 over root x equals 3x to the minus a half. So uh, that is the first mistake. That should be a minus a half here. And then they actually do the integral. So this is what we call a definite integral because it's got numbers on the integral sign. Um, so it's a definite integral, and they've done well. They've increased the power divided by the new power. Increased the power divided by the new power. 3 divided by 3 over 2 is 2. And then the 2, they've increased the power on the x. At the minute, it's an x to the power 0, so it becomes an x to the power 1. So I agree with this step. And then this last step, they need to substitute in the numbers. Now, they substituted in the numbers um correctly apart from the fact that they've got the two and the one the wrong way round these two brackets should be the other way round so that's the second mistake okay those two brackets should have been the other way round you need to substitute in the top number first and then the bottom number okay so that's uh that's the fatal mistake made um made by my them. So now I'm assuming they want us to do the integration. So um, let's have a look. Um, right, b. So we are doing the integral between 1 and 2 of x to the power 4 minus 3x to the minus a half plus 2. Um, right, so it's x to 5 over 5 minus 3x to the half over a half plus 2x and then I'm going to do that between 2 and 1. So increase the power, divide by the new power, increase the power, divide by the new power, increase the power. Um, so I'm going to just tidy that up. x to 5 over 5 minus, well 3 divided by half is 6 plus 2x and I'm doing that between 2 and 1. Now unfortunately I'm going to have to turn over. That's a bit of a pain. Uh, x to the 5 over 5 minus 6x to the half uh, plus 2x between 2 and 1. So, um, new page, ideal. Right, let's have a look. So I need to stick in the top number first. So I'm putting in 2 to the 5 over 5 and then I'm putting in minus 6 uh, times 2 to the power of a half and then I'm adding uh, 2 times 2 which is 4 and then I'm taking away hmm, we normally use curvy brackets at this point sorry use curvy brackets minus 1 over 5 minus 6 times the square root of 1 plus 2 you can now choose what level of manipulation you're going to do in your head I'm now going to bail and use a calculator so just be really, really careful how you're putting this in. So, um, I've got 2 to the 5 over 5 minus 6 times 2 to the half plus 4 minus a fifth minus 6 plus 2. Good, that's it. Which is 5.715 to 3 decimal places. I'll write that now I'll check back and see what the question is. Uh, one. Oh, it wants three significant figures. So um, I just need to get rid of, um, I just need to get it to three significant figures. So if you go back to the number, it would be 5.71. 
So that is, uh, that's the first three questions done. Right, let's do question four then. So, find all the solutions of in the interval 0 to 180 degrees of 2 sine squared 2x minus cos 2x minus 1 equals 0. Right, so... I've got some uh, sines and coses, but I haven't got the same. I've got a sine squared and a cos. I need these to be the same in order to be able to, um, to answer this. So I'm going to use what I know. Now, I really don't know very much about sines and coses, but I do know that cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to write my sine squared as 1 minus cos squared. Then I'm going to get it all in terms of cos squared. Then I'll have a quadratic that hopefully I'm going to be able to solve. So uh, whenever I see a sine squared, I can write min 1 minus cos squared. Now, you would now be shouting, it's a 2x. So I need my 2x uh, minus cos 2x. Now, the 2x's don't matter for now. At the end, we'll just have to be really, really careful about the range that we're dealing with. Um, right. So what have uh, what have I got? I've got a two minus two cos squared two x minus cos two x minus one equals zero. So I've got minus two cos squared two x minus cos two x, and then I've got a two minus one, so plus one equals zero. Now I don't like um, having negative coefficient. So I'm going to put everything on the other side. So I'm going to get 2 cos squared 2x plus cos 2x minus 1 equals 0. Right, the question is, does that factorise? Um, don't know, let's try. You might now want to picture a quadratic. So at this point, if you said that cos 2x equals y, this quadratic is 2y squared plus y minus 1. So you might want to, it might be easier to try and factorise it like, like that. So 2y squared plus 2y minus y minus 1. Right, there are our brackets. So we've got 2 cos 2x minus 1 and cos 2x plus 1. They're my brackets. So... I'm equaling the zero, so I need to set each bracket equal to zero now. So I get 2 cos 2x minus 1 equals zero, and I get cos 2x plus 1 equals zero. So I get cos 2x equals a half, and I get cos 2x equals minus 1. Right, now we need to look at the range. They've told us that x is between zero and 180. So we now need to think. I'm going to inverse cos this and I'm going to get some numbers and then I'm going to divide them by 2 because I, I just want x and if I once I've inverse cos I'm going to be left with 2x. So I'm going to be dividing by 2. So I need my range to be twice as big so that when I half it I end up in this range. So let's do these one at a time. So I've got cos 2x equals a half. So I've got 2x equals, now make sure you're in degrees, which I'm not. So make sure you're in degrees. So um, I've got 60. And then either use the cast diagram or a graph. Think about what the next solution to that's going to be, uh, which would be 300. And then my two solutions from them, I would half both of them. So they're the first two solutions that I get. The next two solutions are going to come, or the next solutions are going to come from here. So I'm going to have cos 2x equals minus 1. So I'm going to have 2x equals 180. Now if you think about the cos graph, between 0 and 360, it's only minus 1 once. So I'm only going to get one solution from that. Right, so put all your solutions together. They are the three solutions uh, to this question. Right, 
I'm going to um, stop this video, check it's working. So this video will be called questions one to four and I'll do another one. I just want to check that the sound and everything uh, are working fine. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, that was questions one to four. The next video will pick up at question five.